This video was made possible by the lovely people on my Patreon. A year and a bit ago, I sat exactly here and made a video called A Letter to Myself 10 Years Ago, which was a retrospective on my mental health, telling my younger self what to expect over the coming decade. This video is a sequel of sorts to that video, so no climate science today, no crazy editing. If that's what you're after, then thank you for watching this far. I will see you in the next video. But for those of you who wish to remain, this video is split into three sections. Firstly, why I'm making this video. Secondly, my story thus far. And thirdly, what I've been doing for the past year about my mental health. Firstly, why am I making this video? I think that YouTube and social media in general has gotten a lot better at destigmatizing mental health, and specifically destigmatizing people putting their hands up and saying, I have a problem with my mental health and I need to do something about it. My initial video was exactly that. It was an attempt to say, look, I'm going to be open about this, I have a problem and I'm going to get help. And I hope that by making that video, it encouraged other people to look at their mental health and perhaps realize that maybe they needed to do the same thing. Where I think YouTube and social media, again, more broadly, is still falling down is the bit that comes after that, the step where people actually get help for their mental health and talk about what that experience is like. In this video, what I'm going to try and do is demystify and destigmatize maybe that discussion. So telling you what I've been up to over the past year, and hopefully that will encourage people who are anxious about getting help because Lord knows I was anxious about going to my doctor and going on medication and getting therapy. I hope that this will make people who were perhaps in the situation I was in a year ago that little bit less worried and uh, that little bit more likely to actually go and seek the help they need. Secondly, my story so far. As people who already saw my first video will know, my problems in my mental health are basically associated with anxiety and depression, with an overarching kind of lack of self-confidence, this fear of disappointing others. This was something that erupted during my fourth year at Oxford and got gradually worse over my PhD and the years when I started making YouTube full time, really coming to a head about a year and a half ago, which is why I made that YouTube video then. Prior to seeking help a year or so ago, I had never spoken to a professional about my mental health. I had never been on any regular medication, and I was basically a complete noob to this whole thing. Part three, what I've been doing for the past year or so about my mental health. After making my first video, I went to see my GP, which was a wait of a couple of weeks. And eventually when I arrived, I had thoroughly overthought the entire thing. When I was sat in the waiting room, I was running through all the worst case scenarios of the doctors thinking that I was a fraud, that I was making this stuff up and that I would be wasting their time. All of these kind of thoughts. When I got in to see the doctor, he basically asked me to explain what the problems I've been having were and established a timeline and how long I've been suffering from negative repercussions like loss of sleep, uh, loss of productivity at work, general anxiety, those kind of symptoms. When it became clear to him that I've been suffering from these symptoms for more than a year, he suggested that I should go on medication. That wasn't something that he forced me to do, it was something that I had complete agency over, and he suggested a light dose of a drug called sertraline. Sertraline is an antidepressant and anti-anxiety drug that I've been taking in small doses every day for the past year or so. I imagine my mental state to basically be a wave. So sometimes you're up, you're riding high, you're having a great day, and then seemingly without warning, the next day you can be really down low. And a depressive period basically consists of those low days stretching on and on and on and lacking motivation and lacking really a will to do anything. In my experience, what these drugs have done is effectively take those lows and bump them up to a mid level. But at the same time, have also taken the highs and bump them down to the mid level. So effectively, you're reducing the amplitude of your wave. You're reducing the contrast so that everything sits that bit closer to the mean. So this has been wonderfully effective in reducing the severity of my depressive periods. They become less frequent and when they do happen they're a lot more manageable. I feel a lot less despair. However, as I said, one of the side effects has been to lower those highs closer to the mean. And so I've generally noticed that the points in my life where I would be really excited and, and really passionate about something, I've just been that little bit less so. And Pixel Girl has noticed this. She says that I've become one of the most indifferent people she's ever met. And that's not something I want, obviously. So my view of the medication is that I will take these pills for as long as I feel like I need them in order to overcome the symptoms that I've been feeling, but with the eventual goal of coming off them. And that of course will only happen when I address the root causes of what's been going on in my head. The medication only treats the symptoms, not those root causes. This is something that the doctor made clear to me in my first appointment and referred me to the local mental health services to start 
conversation about what we could do about the long term, addressing those root causes. Because of where I live, that meant that I had to self-refer, so I had to register with the local services, and they then called me a couple of weeks, I think, after that, and had a multiple, perhaps two or three hour conversation with a professional talking through what I had been going through, what I felt like were my issues, and just sort of offloading to somebody who really knew what they were talking about. And then they went away and had a discussion with other people in their team, and I think about two weeks later called me back uh, with the decision that they were going to prescribe me, if you like, CBT. CBT in this context means Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, which is effectively a program that seeks to kind of rewire how you look at certain things in life. In my experience, one of the key takeaways, for example, was changing operative words in how I view things like my work. So instead of saying, I need to do this, I try to say, I want to do this, or I choose to do this. You're not being indoctrinated or reprogrammed or anything like that. It's effectively targeting a few switches in your brain and trying to flick them, trying to reset them with techniques like meditation, uh, like reading through the testimonies of others, and a, in my particular case, this was a web-based uh, lesson plan over, I think it was 10 weeks, uh, basically doing multiple exercises. Personally, I found some use in this, but after the end of the 10 weeks, I didn't feel like I'd made a huge amount of progress and I wanted to do something more. It was pretty clear to me that I needed to do some therapy with a psychotherapist, and I put off doing this for quite some time, I think because I was anxious all over again about being believed or wasting somebody's time, and I probably put off seeing a therapist for maybe six months? I made it a New Year's resolution to talk to a therapist, and within, I think, two days, I'd found a website where it allows you to find a therapist, and basically you put in there where you live, how far outside of where you live you're willing to travel, and then the specific things you want to talk to a therapist about, as well as if you want to talk to them in person or over the phone, or if you prefer a male or female therapist. As people who have seen my latest vlog will already know, I've been seeing a therapist for several weeks now, basically since the very start of January. Fortunately, it's actually one of these things that you are allowed to do despite COVID uh, still being a thing, uh, I am able to actually see a therapist in person at an appropriate distance. Waiting to go into the first session was, again, extremely anxiety inducing for me. Uh, the whole worries again about being believed, and there's a pattern. Can you, can you see the pattern? But when I got into that first session, obviously my therapist is a professional, knew exactly how to kind of not calm me down, but exactly how to ease me into the setting and this whole experience. And uh, basically since then what we've been doing is talking through my experiences so far, and then trying to identify patterns, certain uh, things that keep repeating through my experiences, and things that I keep repeating, th things that I keep doing. As he puts it, the goal of this is to lead me to doors and for me to open them. He's not forcing me to do anything, he's not telling me to do anything. At the end of the most recent session, he basically told me to go away and think about a particular thing, but that's been the only requirement he has made of me other than to go in with an open mind and to be willing to be honest and to listen. I should specify perhaps that this is private therapy, so one of the options with the mental health, uh, local mental health foundation was doing therapy in this manner with NHS professionals, but the waiting time for that was I think about 18 months. Obviously they're completely overwhelmed at the moment, and so I decided to not do it then and do the CBT route, and I have since doing the CBT and finding it to be not exactly what I was hoping for, I have been paying for private therapy. This has been £50 a week, and so I am in an immensely privileged position to be able to afford that and be able to use that service. And obviously I'm only able to do that because I have this job. And so if you are watching this and you've ever clicked on an affiliate link of mine, or if you've signed up to my Patreon, or if you've bought my poster, then thank you, because you actually allow me to be able to use this service, and it has been wonderfully useful. I anticipate that I'll be continuing weekly therapy sessions for several months. We're still in relatively early days, and I think just at this point where we're starting to unpick certain bad habits, certain bad mental traps that I keep falling into, and hopefully over the coming months, the, those traps having been identified, I will know to consciously avoid falling into them. But again, this is still early days. So that has been my experience with mental health over the past year. Since admitting that I needed to do something about it and admitting that I had really quite a serious problem, I have been using medication regularly and that's been successful, but it's only been addressing the symptoms 
things. And I have tried CBT, found it to be not exactly for me, and have now recently started seeing a qualified therapist and found that to be very useful. At every step on this journey, I was scared. I was anxious. I remember when I first picked up my medication from Boots, I felt like I had a bomb in my bag. I, I don't know why, but I, I just had this overwhelming kind of desire to just take my bag off and run. So if you yourself are at the position that I was a year and a bit ago, and you know you need to get help, but you're scared to do so, I want you to know that it's okay to be scared. Perhaps everybody who goes on this journey is scared, but that if you do take those first steps, you are in the care of people who know what they are doing, who have your best interests at heart, and who I truly believe will make you that bit better but also not completely better. This isn't something that takes place over the course of a week or a month or maybe even a year, as in my case. This is something that takes time. The important thing, as with any journey, is just to take the first step and don't be put off by the fears and anxieties that may be swirling around your head because I know they are real. I have been there and it's really important that you just put a little faith in somebody else and believe that they want to help. That's it for this video. It's far too long. There's probably nobody watching at this point, but if you have made it this far, then I hope that it has been useful in some way or another, whether for you or perhaps if you're supporting somebody else who needs to get help. As ever, thank you so much for watching and especially to the people who support me on Patreon and allow me to do this job and in fact, directly fund my therapy costs. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one which will hopefully be a bit less soul-gazy.